to today's session. Going to start. Okay, so please remember to um, complete the register. I've just shared the link on the chat, and I will also share it later on if new people joins the session at the later stage. Okay, so today we're going to deal with um, quartiles. Um, we're going to learn how to solve questions when we answer questions relating to the quartiles. And remember, likewise, all sessions are interactive. Um, we also follow Newman's prompt error analysis. We ask ourselves, what is the question asking us to do? What are the important facts that are given in the question? And also we identify what kind of a formula we need to be using. Like I said, also with statistics, every week we introduce a new formula. So you just need to make sure that you understand the formula and how to use that formula as well. And after you have identified all the important facts and the formula, then we do the calculation and then we do feedback or we review our solution by redoing it with others and see where we went wrong or we validate our answers and that is the process that we follow in the session and the sessions are interactive i expect you to also do the exercise if there is anything that you are not sure about you can ask I also need to make a disclaimer at this point. We're only going to use the quartile, and I'm only going to show you one way of calculating the quartiles. Sometimes other modules, they use what we call percentile. Quartiles and percentiles are different, but you can calculate them at the same, uh, the same way, uh, not the same way, but they can still give you the same answer. And I will always keep on doing those references when I talk about quartiles and when I talk about percentile um, so that you don't get lost, especially if in your module you use percentile instead of quartiles as well. OK, so the session plan for May looks like this. So today is the first week of May that we have a session. We're doing quartiles and then the following three weeks we will be doing uh, the first one will be the basic concepts of probabilities. We'll learn the, the skills on how to answer question and tackle question relating to basic uh, probabilities. And then we're going to go into looking at the basic concept of discrete probabilities. And because with discrete probabilities, there are two branches um, and I'm not touching on, there are four branches actually, but I'm only going to touch on the two after doing the basic concepts of discrete probabilities as well. Remember also during the session, I might not, but I, I might, because it's a two hour session, we might include the marginal probabilities. I just thought about those who are doing 15 or one. Uh, we might include uh, some marginal probabilities, but right at the end. And then uh, the following week, we will do the two concepts of uh, discrete probabilities, which is binomial and Poisson. The first hour will concentrate on binomial. The second hour will concentrate on Poisson so that then we can cover both. And we're not going to cover exponential or uniform distribution. So those are the two that STA 1501 also uses, but we can find some time, some way during the course of the uh, Akalit uh, literacy to find where we can do both of those two concepts. But for now, this had the schedule, or this is the schedule for May. Do you have any question or comment or query before we start with this week's session? No. Okay. If there are no questions, hey, you guys, you don't have questions. You always don't have questions for me. So I like it. Oh, I am sad because I thought people could be asking questions and telling. Okay, maybe maybe today I must just start the session 
um, different, different than the rest of the other sessions. We are two, four, six, eight in this session, except me. So we are nine, including myself. So I just want to have an understanding. How do you feel so far up to now? Because we've this is our fourth session that we have been having. I want to have a general understanding in terms of how you feeling and have these sessions been helpful up to now. Just a general comment from each one of you. Like everyone, I need two, four, six, eight answers because not, not everyone feels the same. So anyone? Um, good morning. Morning. I, I usually like going first, then that way, like I like I do not have to think hard about what to say. Um, because if everyone else has taken up what what you wanted to say, then it becomes a challenge. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So I, I think um the sessions have been very good and um I did statistics like in high school, but um, the way you are teaching it like takes us a bit further um, than uh, what we learned earlier on. So I think it's it's very interesting and it's very informative and I, I love the format that you have as well. So. Yeah, it's it's a very good format and uh, very enjoyable. Thank you. Next. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I think the, the first speaker was Arnold. I, I somehow uh, agree with what he's saying. The way you you are teaching the, the class, it, it's so easy and it's, it looks simple and easy to understand. I did not do stats in, in high school, but I, I find that it's easy to follow with what you're doing. I just wish you were my tutor, uh, my e-tutor for the 1501. It would have been even awesome. Um, yeah, I am enjoying this, even though I, I find that I'm struggling a little with 1502, but I think if I just keep on with the workshops every every weekend with you, eventually I'll get there. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Morning, morning Ms. Boy. Morning. Um, excuse my voice. I I I have a bout of flu from the past few weeks. Oh, um, sorry. but um, but yes, I I concur with with everyone. Um, I'm enjoying the sessions. Um, I've attended all of them. I didn't attend last week, unfortunately, but I did watch the video, and and now that we've gotten to use the the calculators, I, I've obviously watched the videos and. And the way you explain it, as they say, it's it's simple. Um, it's my first uh, encounter with any form of statistics, and so um, I'm I'm understanding, I'm following, and hopefully the assignments and the exams then bear fruit as to the as to what I am actually feeling like I'm understanding in the subject. So. I'm enjoying them and, and I like the format, so so thank you. OK, thank you. Next. Good morning. Yeah, morning. Uh, Lindu, Lindu is speaking. Uh, I don't have much to say, but I like to concur with others that it's my first time doing stats. And you make it very, very simple to understand. Even the difficult concept, I I don't know that maybe I like you or I like the way you teach it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank but you. Even the, even the YouTube videos, it's like we interacting. So okay. I, 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 I don't want to miss. Sometimes I miss because of other circumstances, but I feel bad when I don't, I don't attend. Yes, mm. thank you, Lindy. Thank you. Next, I think I can take two more and then we start with the session. Good morning, Miss. 
Hello, Sis Lizzie. Hi. How are you and everybody? We good, Justice. Yes, I also want to, in, in Kosa, we say to Uzekem Zekwe, uh, to confirm what others are saying. I'm also new in the statistics, but at least now I have a green light the way you are teaching us. Really, there is a little bit light. I Maybe I also say like the latter speaker that maybe... Uh, I think just this uh, call cut off. Like the same applies to this one. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Sis Liz. No problem, thank you. But my participation will be limited because I'm also on the car now going to the meeting. Oh, busy thank people. Please. <laughs> Okay, last person to. Hi, ma'am. Uh, hi, Kelly. Oh, you hi. Me. Um, yeah, just to add on to what everyone was saying, um, I appreciate and love the pace that you're going on. Um, it makes it easier, and one doesn't feel overwhelmed um, because you're not rushing the sessions, and it makes it easier after the sessions to go back and um, go through the chapters because I find it easier to to attend your sessions and then cover whatever you covered in, in the chapter again. Um, yeah. It just puts everything else in perspective. Um, so kudos to, to your teaching method. It's honestly brilliant. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, thank you. I appreciate all your, 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 your comments um and yeah it really gives me that energy to go on as well because i don't want to do things and people are not learning from them or they are not appreciating them but from what i hear is that you guys um the pace that i go with and how i do things so i don't have to change much but i think also as a person, I have grown from when I started with the accolades and now I'm trying to also implement new things um, in my method of how I deliver these things because these are, um, uh, are not tutorials, they are skills. So um, I'm also learning um, in this um, to also move away from a tutorial teaching method to a facilitation method but i will get there so but i appreciate all your input so let's get on to this week's session where we discuss um quartiles so today's session you just need your formula and your calculator as well um even though we're not gonna use functions and all that from the calculator we're just gonna do normal calculations um, and I think the formulas, there are only three or four formulas that you just need to remember and they are easy to remember. Um, so yeah, and the calculator is just to calculate the, the values adding and subtracting. So there is not much that you will use the calculator for as well. So let's look at what we're going to learn. By the end of the session, you should be able to find quartile position and quartile value. Those two things are different. So the quartile position, we find it using a formula and then the quartile value you go and identify based on the value that you found from the position to allocate, to locate. The same way as we did with the median. When we were finding the median, we would uh, find the position and then go find the value that the median is located at. Then we also going to identify the five number summary and construct a box whisker plot. And, here we also include um, visualization of your quartiles, which uh, the visualization will be in a form of a box whisker or a box plot. Okay, so what are quartiles? Quartiles are a way of splitting your data into four parts. Like with the with the percentile, a percentile is splitting your data into hundred parts, right? Quartiles will split your data into four parts, four equal parts of 25 percentiles within it. So the first quartile, which is quartile one, 
is the value of which 25% of the observation are smaller or are larger than 75% of the data. And that's where the quartiles and also the percentile um, go hand in hand, because if you want to calculate 25 percentile of the data, which means calculating quartile one, you can use the percentile to do that. But with percentile, you can also calculate 13 percent of the data, 12 percent of the data, whereas with quartiles, you can only calculate the three quartiles. Quartile two, which is the same as your median, and that is where 50% of the data is allocated above or below that value, or they are smaller or larger than that median value. And quartile three is where 25% of the data or the observation are larger than uh, that value, or they are smaller than that value. So that is your quartile three. How do we then calculate or locate the quartiles? To locate the quartiles, we use the position. Before we can determine what value that quartile is at, we need to find the position. Quartile one position, we find it by using Q1 is equals to N plus one divided by four, where N is number of your observations or the number of the data or your sample size. And that will give you the position of quartile one, which is N plus one divided by four. Quartile two, which is the same as the median, it's N plus one divided by two. And quartile three, which on my slides, I'm gonna co quickly fix it on the fly as well, because I think I made a mistake there. Okay. And Quartile three is given by three times quartile one, which is 75% of quartile one values. So it's three times one plus one, n plus one divided by four, which will give us the quartile position, quartile three position. How do we then do this? The same way as we have done with the median. In order to find the quartiles, there are certain things that you need to take into consideration because also quartiles helps us to measure the, the distribution of your data and the center alone can be misleading if you use the 50%. Um, so you just need to make sure that you also have the other quartiles. And how do we do that? you first need to arrange your data from lowest to highest. Like we did with the median, we arrange your data in ascending order. And once you have done that, then you can calculate your first quartile and allocate, uh, um, uh, locate your third quartile and your second quartile and also you are able to calculate what we call the range or the interquartal range, which is your quartile three value, not the measure, not the position, but the value, quartile three value minus quartile one. And we will get to that in, in no time. When you calculate your quartiles now, because you are dividing by four or dividing by two, sometimes the answer you will get might be a whole number. Sometimes it might be a fractional number. Sometimes it might be a non-fractional number. And when I refer to a fractional number, I'm referring to a value that ends with 8.5. So if the results you get is a whole number, then it's easy to locate the value of the uh, of the quartile. So, for example, if we have one, three, three, four, five, and six, and we say our quartile one position is on position number is this it's on the second position. So that is easy to locate because it's a whole number. Once we calculate n plus one divided by four and we find that it is equals to two, we can locate that quartile. Easy. 
you also need oh, to remember that sometimes sorry. when can you I, do those calculations, quartile one can be quartile one, you can find the position of quartile one and it might be 2.5. So when it is 2.5, it means it will be located between two values. So you, you will see say one, two point five will be between two values. And that is what we say it is when it is a fractional half. Then we're going to take the average of the two, like we did with the median. When it's located between two values, we take the average of the two values. So that you is Elizabeth. Yes. I think your your presentation is paused. We still see um, where you edited quartile three on there. Uh oh, sorry. You still see this? Yeah, that's what we were seeing, but yes. we, it's in presentation mode now. Thank you. OK, so I explain all this. So you order your data, you, cut, you find your quartile one, you find your quartile three, and we you are able to also find the quartile three value and minus the quartile one value. I am now at this point where I am explaining that when you do those calculation and find your quartile as a whole number, the value you see on your quartile, so like I'm going to rewrite all that I had was one, three, three, four, five, and six. And I said, if quartile one value, you find that it is two, which is on the second position, which is the position. So it's on the second position. Then you can allocate or you can locate the position easier because it's a whole number. It's one, two, you just count there. But if your quartile one, is 2.5 position. Therefore, it means it's located between two values like we did with the median. You're going to take the average of the two values. So you're going to say 3 plus 3 divided by 2, which will be the same as 3. That will be your quartile 1. And that is when it is fractional half. When the result is not a whole number or is not a fractional half. We call it a non-fractional. So therefore, it means the answer you might get will be point, oh, not zero, but it might be point two five, or it might be point seven five. So there are several things that you need to also remember when it's like that. So let's say our quartile one value now it is 2.25. If the position is, we located it and it is on 2.25, we can then estimate that quartile one value is at position two. So we round down the position to quartile two because the values are very far away from three from the third position, but closer to the second position. If quartile one value is 2.75, therefore we go into round it up because the values are far away from, uh, from the second position, but closer to 75% closer to position three. So we're going to round it up. So that is the same as met. Right? With met, if the value to the left is less than or equals to two, we do nothing. Oh, it's less than or equals to five, we do nothing. If it's greater than or equals to five, we add one to the value on the right. That's how we round off. So when quartile one is 2.25, we round down to two. If it's 2.75, we round up to 3 because the values are closer, 75% closer to position 3. Okay, so you always need to remember this. How do we then calculate and locate the quartiles? Let's look at this example. Given this data set, which is ordered 
already. So your data set that you will get in the exam or in your assignment might not be ordered. You just need to always remember when it's quarters, when it's median, you need to order your data from lowest to highest. So this data set is already uh, ordered and I can count how many there are. There are nine observations on this data set. I can go and find quartal one position by using my formula n plus one divided by four. To find the quartal one position, then it mean I must replace n by nine because I know that there are nine observation plus one divided by four and I find that, that it's located in position 2.5. So it's somewhere between 12 and 13. So because the value is between the two values, then I must take the average. And it's just saying 12 plus 13 divided by 2 because to take an average of a number, you divide by how many they are. And there are only two values. So 12 plus 13 divided by 2 gives us 12.5. And that will be our quartal one value. Remember, position and value. Position and value. We can also take this and calculate our quartal three, quartal four, uh, sorry, quartal two, and the interquartal range. So first, let's calculate the rest of the quartal. So we already calculated quartal one in our previous example. Calculating quartal two, we know that quartal two is given by, quartal two is given by n plus one divided by two, which is the same as the median. n is nine plus one, it's 10, 10 divided by two, it's located on the fifth position. So we go and count one, two, three, four, five position, and that will be our median or our quartal two value, which is equals to 16. We can also go and calculate quartal three. And quartal three value, it's given by three times n plus one divided by four. Three times nine plus one. Nine plus one is 10, 10 times three is 30, 30 divided by four is 7.5 position. We go and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven point five. Is located between two values, 18 and 21, and we take the average of those two values and we find that our position is 19.5. Quartal 1 and quartal 3 are measures of non central location because those are not measure of central location, but quartal 2 is a measure of central location because it's the same as your median. And that's how you find the quartals. Any questions before we move on? I'm going to get to the exercises just now. If there are no questions. If there are no questions, then we move on to the next part. How do we find interquartile range? Remember we said we can find the interquartile range, which is the range of your quartiles. Um, An interquartile range is calculated as, like we said before, quartal three value, not position, value minus quartal one value. And that gives you the spread in terms of the quartiles. And the spread 50% range of the quartiles. Your interquartile range is also called the mid spread because it covers the middle 50% of the data only. And you will see when we look at the box, uh, box whisker, you will see how the interquartile range now relates to the statements that I am saying now. 
The interquartile range is a measure of variability that is not influenced by the outliers because the outliers are on the extreme length or on the maximum and the, and the um, uh, smallest value. And here the interquartiles only talks to quartile one and quartile three. Measures like quartile one, quartile three, and interquartile range are not influenced by outliers because they are resistant measures and because also we do not consider the extreme outliers because we're only looking at the middle box as well. How do we then calculate interquartile? Now, remember from our exercise that we did, we went and we found that our quartiles, we said the first one, quartile one, is between 12 and 13 and quartile three. So we said quartile one is located there and quartile three is located there. And we did go and find the value and we found that it was 12.5. Let's go back. We can go back if we said it's 12.5 and 19.5. So I don't have to go in and calculate them again because I know them. We did calculate them. So it's 12.5 and 19.5. Interquartile range, it's Q3 minus Q1. So Q3 value was 19.5. We put there. Q1 value was 12.5. We put there. And 19.5 minus 12.5 gives us 7. And that's how you calculate interquartile range. Easy stuff, right? Now let's look at this example. We're going to do this together. Together, together. So we are given a table of 20 travel times from 20 um, travel times for 20 New Yorkers. And the data is not sorted, as you can see. And we can sort the data. I'm going to save you a whole lot of time because I want us to get to the exercise. So sorting the data, I've already color coded some of the things, but don't worry about that. Sorting the data, and that is our sorted data. Now, if we need to calculate quartiles from here, I need to also count how many data set we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So our n is equals to 20. Now, remember that in the exam, they will not give you a huge data set, but in the assignment, they might give you a huge data set. In the exam, they will give you 10 or 15 or 5. So a small data set, a manageable data set that you can work quickly through it. So here we have 20 data sets or data points or observations. Now we need to calculate quartile one. So let's go and find quartile one, Q1. It's given by N plus one divided by four. Our N is 20 plus one divided by four. 21 divided by 4, it's how much? 21 divided by 4 is 5.25. 5.25. What do we learn or what did we learn about the quartiles? We learned that. If it's from down. We round down, so that will be five. And since it's on, it's located at position, so it's on the fifth value or fifth position. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, and that is our fifth value. And our Q one is equals to fifteen. Regardless of whether there are two 15s, so that is our Q1. So now let's go find Q2. Q2, it's N plus 1 divided by 2. 
which is 20 plus 1 divided by 2. What is 21 divided by 2? It's 10.5. 10. 10.5. So 10.5, it means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10.5. It's located between two values. So our Q2, this is our position. Our value will be 20 plus 25, right? Divide by 2. What is 20 plus 25 divided by 2? It's 22.5. 22.5. That is our Q2. Now let's go find our Q3. Our Q3, remember, is 3 times quartile 1, which is 3 times n plus 1 divided by 4. 3 times 20 plus 1 divided by 4. 21 times 3 divide, it's 63 divided by 4. It's 15.75. 15.75. What do we know? We round it up. Round up. Round it up. And that will be on position 16. 16. So we go count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Our Q3. It's on position 16 and it is equals to 45. Now we can calculate interquartile range, which is our IQR. I just want to check because I, I think the IQR, so we've got our 15, our 2.25, Please ignore this. I think I, it's an error here. It used the percentile. It's 45, the answer. So therefore, it means I must also fix the interquartile range. So this should be 45. And what is the answer? Sorry, I must. I am apologizing for this because I think I made a lot of errors on this slides. Mm, the answer um, is 30. Let's go fix that. So this should be F and this should be 45. And the answer should be just date. And the date. Okay, so the answer will be just 30. And we can conclude by saying the range of the middle value or half of the times for the New Yorkers in the sample is 30 minutes. So it means they travel almost on average 30 minutes. And that's how you find the quartiles. Now, when you have your quartiles, like if I look at this data set, we have the, make the smallest value, we have our quartile, we have our median, we have our quartile three, and we have our highest value. All those values, so all these small and highest, all these values, there are one, two, three, four, five of, the, of them. They are what we call a five number summary. And those five number summary helps us to visualize the quartiles. The five number summary includes the minimum and the maximum values. And those alone tell us a little about the distribution as a whole. 
but if we include the median and the quartiles, they will tell us about the distribution in of that uh, data that you are working with. And later on, we're going to look at how we also uh, interpret the distributions using the quartiles, whether is it left skewed or right skewed, um, where, and whether it's symmetric. In order for us to get that distribution or to be able to display the distribution, a five number summary chart or plot it's helpful because it will display your smallest value, which is your minimum value, your quartile one, your median, your quartile three, because your median is quartile two, your quartile three, and the maximum value, which is your smallest value. And you can also use your box plot or your five number summary to identify any outliers. So let's look at this data set that we had previously. Remember? We found that our quartile one, now I forgot what our quartile one was, was 15. Quartile two was 22.5 and quartile three was 45. So let's plot the same data we had. We have our minimum value is five from the sorted data set. Our maximum value from the data set if you look at the maximum value would have been 65 it's 85 sorry it's 85 yes, 85 85 85 is our maximum and our minimum and we know that our quartile one was 15 our quartile Two, which is the median was 22.5 and our quartile three was 45. So now we can draw a box. So the box is made up of these three values. The whiskers, that is why it's called a box whisker. The whiskers are the lines that will connect the quartile one to minimum value and quartile three to maximum value. So if I have a box, you will see that it will look like this. And here you will have your quartile one. And here you will have your quartile two. And here you will have your quartile three. And there is your maximum, your smallest or minimum. And your maximum will be 85. Now, you can see that 85 is an outlier already because I think most of the data, if 65 was somewhere there, that would be 65 and something like that. So probably my box also should have come to this because my my quartile three is 45 and this I drew it with 42. As you can see, there is your box whisker plot. Any questions? Any question? If there are no questions, then we can go and do some exercises. But before we go there, let's look at the distribution of our data by using the five number summary to describe the distribution or the shape of the data, whether our data is left skewed, right skewed, symmetrical. Now, you will need to remember all the permutation, but because you're writing an online exam, you don't have to. You just need to make sure that you know where to find this chart. The chart says if your median value, which is your quartile two, your median is quartile two, always remember that. If your quartile two minus your quartile one, oh, sorry, quartile two minus your smallest value, if it is bigger than your largest value minus your mean, then your data is left skewed. The other way of also identifying whether your data is left skewed, if your quartile one minus your smallest value is greater than your largest value minus quartile three value, then your data is left skewed.
if your median minus your Q1, which is your quartile one, if it's greater than your Q3 minus your median, then your data is left skewed. So there are three scenarios that you can use to find out whether your data is left skewed. How do we identify whether the data is symmetric? Your median minus the smallest value should be equals to your largest value minus the median. So it should be 50-50. They should be equal. Or if your quartile one value minus your smallest value should be equals to your largest value minus quartile three. Or your median minus quartile one should be the same as your quartile three value minus the median. And that should tell you that your data is symmetrical. Or it's normally distributed. For right skewed, you need to remember that if your median, which is your quartile two value minus the smallest value, if it's less than your largest value minus the median, then your data is right skewed. Otherwise, if your Q1 value minus the smallest value, if it's less than your largest value minus your Q3 value, then your data is right skewed. The last one to determine whether your data is right skewed is if your median, which is Q2 minus Q1, if it's less than your Q3 minus the median, then your data is skewed. And that's how you will identify the distribution of your data using the quartile. So you remember now you can use your as measures of central location to locate whether your data is skewed to the left or to the right by using the mean and the median and the mode. If they are all equal, then it is symmetrical and so forth. Or you can use the five number summary to allocate whether your distribution is left skewed, symmetrical or right skewed. So you just need to remember that. Now we're done. Any questions? Then we can start with exercises. I'm going to give you some time to do some of these exercises. And then we'll come back and reflect. So now, need to read the question. What is it that it's asking you to do? And identify the formulas for each one of them and answer the question. Now, because these are multiple choice questions, I would suggest that before you even start with doing everything or answering the question, what I will suggest we do because we are practicing, the first step, because most of the questions will have a data set, order your data or read the question first. So you must just make sure that you read the question. Sort your data from lowest to highest, Instead of answering the question, look at the options and answer the key tabs that are given on the question. And once you have answered those key terms, then we can you can then answer the question and choose whichever is incorrect or whatever is correct or whatever the question is asking you to do. OK. So let's look at question exercise one. Consider the following data set. They have given you the data set. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So it means we need to be finding the incorrect answer. 
option one states that the median of the sample is eight. Therefore, it means if I count the observation, I should get eight observations. The second one, it says the first quartile is four. Therefore, it means I need to know what the formula of the first quartile is. Calculate the position of that first quartile and answer the question. If they would have said, what is the first position or what is the, the position of the first quartile? Then you know that you only stop at the position, but here they are asking you, what is the first quartile? So you first need to calculate the position and then find the quartile. The quartile, the third quartile is 14. You do the same, find the position, then calculate the quartile. What is the mean? The mean is the average. You calculate the mean and find out. Now you are also asked. Oh, sorry. The, the first one was the median. So therefore it means the median, you need to sort and find the median position and then calculate the median, which is your quartile two. What is the distribution? Then you can use either the median and the mean to find the distribution, or you can use the quartile values to determine what the distribution of this data set is. So I'm going to give you five minutes to answer this and then we'll reflect on the question. And then in the meantime, those who joined late, I'm going to post the register. Please make sure that you complete the register. If it's your first time, we always keep the register so that Unisa Paro can know who attends the session and also for communication purposes in case there are certain things that we want to share with people who are in this session. Remember, you can use uh, the chat also to, to give your final answer, but we're going to work through all the options together.
Are we done? Are we done? Let's look yes, at the question. So let's sort the data. Anyone? Um, so I sorted the data by order um, sorting them from three, I uh, first said three, then four, then six, seven, nine, 10, 14, and 23. That is our sorted data. The median of the sample is eight. How do we find the median position? It's n plus one divided by two. Our median position will be n plus one. How many put how many are they? There are eight. Eight plus one divided by two, which is nine divided by two. Oh, it's equals to four point five. 4.5, therefore the median, okay, two will be one, two, three, four point five. It's, am I counting right? One, two, three, four, four point five. It's yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. It's between seven. And nine. nine. And then our median. So that will be divided by two, then it'll make it eight. Okay. And that will be equals to eight. So therefore, that is correct. Right. The second one. Our first quartile is that, so we need to find the position first. So n plus one divided by four, which is eight plus one divided by four, which will be nine divided by four. Which is um, 2.25. Uh, 2.25. Therefore, we can round it up, uh, round it down to to two. So it's on the second position. One, two, the second position. Therefore, our quartile one is equals to. Then we round down. Yeah. So it's on the second position. So. On the second position, the quartile one value will be equals to four. Therefore, that is correct. Going to the next one. Going to the next one says quartile, the third quartile, which is three times n plus one divide by four, which is three times eight plus one divide by four. Nine times three divide by four is how much? 27 divided by four, which is 6.75. 6.75. 
which is 6.75 and we also do the same we round it up and that will be on position seven so we go count one two three four five six seven it is our Q3, it's on position 7, which is equals to 14. And we have third quartile as 14, therefore that is correct, right? The last one, or the second last way we do calculations, the mean is 9.5. So the mean, we know that the mean is the sum of all observations divided by how many they are. So adding 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 7 plus 9 plus 10 plus 14 plus 23, you get 9.5. By 8 because 3 plus 4 plus until 23 will give you 76. 76 divided by 8. That is if I my calculations are right. 76, yes. Okay, so 9.5. Now we need to come to the distribution. They say our distribution is symmetric. If it's symmetric, it means if we use the measures of central location, it means the mean and the median should be the same for it to be symmetric, or we can use the quartiles, and I'm going to choose the other one. So if it's symmetric, it means the median, which is Q2 minus Q1 value, which is the easy one, should be the same as Q3 minus Q2. So if both of these can be equal. So let's look at the median. The mean is 9.5 and 8, so they are not equal. So it's not symmetrical, so this statement cannot be true. Let's look at the second one, Q2, which is 8. So if we use the second statement, if we use that, so Q2 is 8 minus Q1 is 4. We say it should be equal to Q3, which is 14, minus Q, Q2, which is the median, which is 8. Here we get 4, and here we get 7. No, we get 6, right? 14 minus 8. That's six. It's six. Yes, it's six. So they are not equal. So they cannot be symmetric. So that is the incorrect one. And we can also say this, the data set, instead of saying not equal, we can also say because um, they are not equal there, but four uh, is less than six. Six is greater than four. So therefore, the data set is actually right skewed. The data set will be right skewed. And if the data set is right skewed, let's look at it in terms of the box whisker. We said our quartile one is four. So our box will start there. Our quartile three, our box will end there. Our median is eight. Our line will be there. And if I join both of this, and there is our line, and I can extend my whiskers to the side. 
and that's how the, the data will look on a box whisker plot. But in a way, if we, if we do this properly, this will look like this in a way. So 14 will be somewhere there and 23 will be somewhere there. And you can see that the box will drag to 14 where 14 is here. And you can see that this box, this side, the box, this side is bigger than the box on this side. So this side and this side are not the same, not equal. So the right is bigger than the left, and that is right skewed. And if we do draw a thingy, it will look somehow like this. If we draw a normal bell cafe shape, uh, shape to show where your averages are, and you can see that your distribution is left skewed anyway. Okay, so that's how you will identify whether your data is how, how the data is distributed, either by using the bell shape curve or by using the box plot, it can also help. Right, let's go to exercise two. You also have five minutes to do exercise two. Pay attention to the keywords asked in the question in order for you to fall in the trap as well. And remember interquartile range, which is IQR, is your Q1 value, or oh, sorry, Q3 value minus Q1 value. Are we winning? Still calculating. Almost. Yeah.
Are we winning? Yes. Anyone still calculating? Is it five point twenty? Five point twenty five or it's five to five. Yeah. So let's do the X let's do some feedback in terms of that. So consider a simple data set, one, two, three, four, five, six. Which one of the following statement is correct? So the question is asking us to find the correct statement. Our data, we identify things given here. Our data is already sorted, so there is no need for us to sort this data. Question number one. The position of the first quartile is 2.5. So they are asking you to find the position, which is for quartile one. N plus one divided by four. How many are they? There six. are six points. Six, six. Yeah. Divide by four. So it's seven divided by four. 1.75. It is 1.75. So therefore, this position is not correct. Because they say the position is 2.5. Number two, it says find the value, not the position, but the value. But before we can find the value, it means we need to find the position. So n plus 1 divided by 2 because it's quartile two, so it's six, six plus one divided by two, seven divided by two. 3.5. 3.5, and there our quartile two will be located between two values, right? One, two, 3.5, it's between 3 and 4. So 3 plus 4 divided by 2, 7 divided by 2. 3.5. It's 3.5. And here it says the quartile value or the second quartile value is 3, therefore it is not correct. The median is four, and the median is the same as quartile two. So here it says the median is four. We know that the median is 3.5, not four. Therefore, also this is not correct because we can use the same information we got from the first, the second question. Number four, it says the value of the third quartile is 5.2. So they are asking you to find 3 times n plus 1 divided by 4, which is 3 times 6 plus 1 divided by 4. 7 times 3 divided by 4, it's how much? 5.25. 5.25, because we're looking for the value, therefore we're going to round down because it's 0.25 and that will be five, right? Yes. Yes. And our quartile three value. Going to count one, two, three, four, five, which is equals to five. And the eight says the quartile value is 5.25. That is the position, not the value. So therefore, that is not correct. So the last one, interquartile range is equal to three. Let's verify that. We know that quartile three value, we did go and find that. It's five minus 
quartal one value. We did go and find quartal one value. No, we didn't find quartal one value. So quartal one value, we're going to so estimate. Round up. Round up to two. To two. So mm -hmm. our quartal one value will be equals to. Two. 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 Five minus two is three. Easy, right? Easy, right? Yeah. Consider only the number of people living with ASD. Given in the table, table 1.1c has the number of people 108, 44, 206, 85, and 57. Which of the following statement is correct? The median is 85 and is equals to the mean. Number two, the value of quartal one is 57. But the position of quartal two is two. The value of quartal three is 157. The distribution of the number of people living with ASD is symmetric. So we need to find the correct Question, sort your data, find what is the median, find what is the mean, find the value of quartal one, find the position of quartal two, find the value of quartal three, which quartal two is the same as the median. So if you have found the position, it will answer the two, and then determine whether it is symmetric. Remember, you, the symmetric means mean is equals to the median or Q, Q2, which is the median minus Q1, should be the same as Q3 minus Q, Q2. So you can use those two to determine whether is it symmetric or not. But first sort your data. I can help with sorting the data as well. It's 44 because this is very small number. 85, 108, and 206.
Are we winning? Yes, we are winning, I think. Uh, Lindy, where are you still not seeing the slides? I, I think do you're not. the only person now. I do not. Oh, you do? Hey. Now I, I went out, sorry. I will share them again. Okay. Are we done? Or are we still calculating? Remember we're looking for the correct answer. Happiness, are we there? Are we good or are we great? Can we answer the question? Okay, so the first one says the median is 85 and is equals to the mean. So can we find the median? We'll have to find the position first. So the position of the median is n plus 1 divided by 2. There are, how many there are? There are five, right? Yeah. Plus one divided by two, which is six divided by two. Which is three. Is equals to three, which is the position. What will be the median? which is the same as Q2. The median will be on position 3, 1, 2, 3, which is 85, right? But the question says it is equal to the mean, so it means we need to go find the sum of all observation divided by how many they are. If we add all these values, how much do you get? 500. That's 500. That by will five. be 500 divided by 5, which is equals to 100. 100. So if the mean is 100, therefore it means they are not, they are not equal. So this is not the correct answer that we are looking for. We move on to the next one. The next question asks, Oh, why did I delete that? It's fine. We know what the, we did find our median position was three. I'm just going to write it there so that we can remember that. The second one says quartile one is 57. So we need to find the quartile one value. But we first need to find the position n plus 1 divided by 4. So it will be 5 plus 1 divided by 4. 6 divided by 4 is how much? 
1.5, sorry, 1.5. It's 1.5. So it means it's between two values if it's 1.5. So it's between, so our quartile one will be between two values. It's between 44 and 57, right? So we'll say 44 plus 57 divided by 2. And that gives us how much? 50.5. 50.5. So here yeah, the answer will be 50.5, which is not 57. So that will not be the right answer as well. The third one says the position of Q2 is 2. So it means we need to go find the position of Q2. We're not going to go and do that because when we found the median, value to be 85, we went and found the position. So this is the same as the position for Q2, right? Because Q2 and the median are the same. So we found that it was three. It's not equals to two, right? The value of Q3 is 157. So it means we need to go find three times n plus one, find the position first, which is three times five plus one, divide by four, six times three, divide by four. It's equals? 0.5. 4.5. And Q3? will be between two values. It will be between one, two, three, four, five. So it will be between 108 plus 206. So 108 plus 206 divided by two gives us Q3 value of? This is 157. 157, therefore this is? The correct answer in the exam, you stop right there, but because this is not an exam, we can also go and find the answer for option four. Remember, for option four, we just need to prove any of the two because it says it's symmetric. So it means the mean should be equal to the median or Q2 minus Q1 should be equal to Q3 minus Q2. We know that the median is 85 and the mean is 100. So the first one cannot be proven. So it's not symmetric. You can go and do the same with Q2 because with Q2 minus Q1, Q2, the position is 2, so therefore it means it's 57 minus, I'm sorry, the position is 3, not, not that. Q2 is 85. So it's Q2 minus Q1 should be the same as Q3 minus Q2. That's what we want to prove. So Q2 is 85 minus Q1. We found that it was 50.5. And Q3, 157 minus Q2 of 85. So we want to prove if those sites are equal. So 85 minus 50.5 is 35. Point 34.5. That will be 34.5 equals 57 minus 85. 72. 72. They are not equal. So we are able to prove that it's not symmetric. So that will be also not correct. So the only answer that is correct is number four. We left with 15 minutes and I've got... 10 questions or 11 questions. So if I go slowly, we've got question number four, question number five, question number six, and question number seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you can do all of them at your own leisure. Uh, the notes will be posted as well. Um, you can 
use this to practice. So you can use the same data set to calculate the mean, the median, the mode, calculate the range, the standard deviation, calculate the quartiles, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, quartile interquartal range, and calculate and draw up the box whisker plot. So this is just for practice purpose. So let's go back to our exercises and see if we can answer a couple of them. Consider only the number of people living with ASD. So this is almost the same question as the previous one. So we have all the answers here. Remember what quartile three is? It's 157. And remember what quartile one is? It's 50.5. So you just need to calculate your interquartal range. So they say the interquartal range is mm, is equals to the range, always less than the range, uh, 149, 51, and zero. So one of these questions should fill up that blank. So since we know that IQR, not, we're not sure whether the answer that we're going to get here will be the answer that we are looking for. We just need to calculate. We know that it's Q3 minus Q1. Q3 was 157. Remember, not the position, but the veil. Minus 50.5. 157 minus 50.5. It's 106.5. 106.5. There we go. So therefore it means that cannot be the answer that we are looking for. So we can move on to the next question. I'm gonna start from bottom going up as well so that I can eliminate all the values. So we know when we do the calculation, your interquartile range is not zero, is not 51 and is not 149. That's what we got from the calculation that we did. So it leaves us with only those two questions. Now, let's draw a box whisker plot because I think with a box whisker plot, it will help us answer this question. <coughs> I'm just going to draw a generic box, box whisker where we have the smallest value and the highest value. We have quartile one, Quartal two and quartal three. What do we know about this? We know that we can find our IQR from there. But what do we also know about the range? We can find the range of the data by taking your highest value minus your lowest value, whereas with interquartal is Q3 minus Q1. So now let's see which option here replaces the question, like the blank space. The interquartal range is equals to the range. Is that true? The interquartal range is always less than the range. Which one will you choose? Number two. Uh, I think number two. Number two will be the correct answer because we know that the interquartile range will always be smaller than the range because the range is your highest value minus your lowest value. And that's how you will answer the questions. You should be able to answer this question with ease, but I'm not going to ask you to answer it right now because it's almost similar to what we have been doing all along. So given the data, sort the data from lowest to highest and looking at this data set is already sorted, but you can write it out so that you are able to um, sort it. So you're looking for the incorrect answer. You need to find the position, 
not the value, the position of quartal one, the position of quartal two, the position of quartal two, or the median. So you can see that those two questions are almost exactly the same. And the position of quartal three, and they're asking you to find the value of quartal three. You just need to make sure that you are able to identify what is given in the question. This question is the same as the one that I am giving you. We are not different. It's one in, one in the same. <gasps> yes, so it's just a repeat. Exercise six and exercise five are the repeat. In I just want to bring to your attention as well. So because you write multiple choice questions, sometimes your questions might not come as straightforward as only the quartiles, only uh, the standard deviation. So it can look like this. This is one of the questions from um, a previous tutorial letter or a past exam paper. So they give you the data and they ask you multiple things on there from different area or different sections. Using the data, find the range, find the interquartal range, find the coefficient of variation, find the range, interquartal range, and the coefficient of variation and just repeating it themselves. So you can see that they can ask you questions relating to measures of central tendencies, measures of variation and the quartiles in one question as well. So you need to be able to identify the formula that you need to use. So for example, here the range is high value minus low value. Interquartal range, it means you need to go find the position of quartile three minus the position, uh, not the position, you need to go find the position and go find the value of quartile three and also go find the value of quartile one. So here you will use n plus 1 divided by 4 to find the quartile 1 position and then find the value. And here you will use 3 times n plus 1 divided by 4 to find the position and then go find the value. Coefficient of variation. Remember, you can use your calculator to calculate the coefficient of variation. Otherwise, you can use the formula. Cv is equals to your standard deviation divided by the sample mean. Therefore, it means you need to calculate your S, which is the square root of your sum of your observed value minus the mean or the sample mean squared divided by N minus 1. And the mean, you will need to find the sum of all your observation divided by N. Otherwise, use your calculator to calculate, store the data, and calculate the coefficient of variation. And then the other questions will just be general theory questions that they can ask you in the exam or in your assignment. You need to know both. But remember that also these sessions, we only concentrate on the skills in terms of calculations and all that, but we do give you some of this theory, but you need to go and learn some of the theory. Um, maybe probably your Twitter will give you more in-depth theory than my because I only concentrate on calculations mostly. So you need to know, like we did previously, the range and interquartile range, are those measures of variation or not? You need to know that. Coefficient of variation is a measure of central tendency. Is that correct? Therefore, it means you need to go and learn what are measures of central tendency, which are only three measures of central tendency that you need to know about. So is that one of them, coefficient of variation? If so, then that will be the correct answer or the incorrect answer. But you just need to make sure that you know and understand how to answer the questions. This is also same need to find the interquartile range. Therefore, it means you need to first find the position of the quartile three. So interquartile range, which is your IQR. You need to find QR value minus Q 
one value where we know that Q3 value is 3 times n plus 1 divided by 4, and Q1 value is n plus 1, or position is n plus 1 divided by 4, and then the value you find, you substitute, but first you need to sort this data set like from ascending order, like from lowest to highest before you do anything else. Other type of questions, let's see if there is another variation. Nothing variation about this because it's almost similar to what we have been doing, calculating the position of quartile one, finding the median, finding the value, finding the range. Remember the range, highest minus lowest. I just want to remember, remind you because we didn't cover the range today. It was part of the measures of variation. And find the quartile three value. Always remember to find the position, then the value first. And always remember that medium is the same as Q2. Always, always remember that. And I think we covered this one. I don't have to say it a lot. So you can do some of these activities. You can share them on WhatsApp if you want. You can email me. You have my email address. Other than that, I think we can conclude today's session. What we have learned up to now, we've learned how to calculate interquart oh sorry quartiles by first finding the position of the quartiles, then finding the value of the quartiles. But before you do that, you need to order your data from lowest to highest or in an ascending order. And once you have your quartile values, you are able to calculate your interquartile range. And you can also display your quartiles on a five number summary to check the distribution of your data by using a box with a plot, which gives you the smallest value or the minimum value quartal three value, sorry, quartal one value, quartal two value, which is the same as the median, and quartal three value, and the highest value or the maximum value. And with a box whisker plot, it can also help you to identify if your data has any outliers. And you can also see the distribution of your data. If it is left skewed, there are three statements that you can use, but the one that is most clearly remembered is if your data, if the mean or Q2 minus Q1, if it's greater than Q2 minus median, oh, I'm talking crap now. If your Q2 minus Q1 is greater than Q3 minus Q2, then your data is left skewed. If your median, which is Q2 minus Q1, if it's the same as Q3 minus Q2, then your data is symmetrical. If it's right skewed, therefore it means the Q2 minus Q1 should be less than Q3 minus Q2. Then your data is right skewed or positively skewed. Otherwise, you can use the median and the, the mode to find out whether the data is symmetrical or is skewed. And that is it from me to you. Any question, any comments before we say goodbye? going once, going twice, and in the absence of any question or comment, please make sure that you complete the register. I just posted it again in the chat. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you next Saturday.
when we deal with probabilities. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.